morning. Here we are again. It is Saturday morning. The sun's about to come up and our day is going to get started. And the first thing I wanted to do this morning was the quilting corner segment. So let's get started. We didn't have anyone turn in any information for a subscriber spotlight. So I guess we won't have that segment today. If you want to be a subscriber spotlight, spotlight, then contact us via email, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, however you can get in touch with us. Call us and give us that information. Give us a picture or any kind of information about something you have, an heirloom, something you've been handed down, some special item, something you've made. Doesn't matter. Anything handmade, we want to see it. We want to inspire other people to get started in the craft as well. So contact us with that information. But since we don't have anyone today, I guess it's going to be me again, sort of, in a way. I guess you could call it me. What we're going to talk about today is sewing machines. And I can't wait to get started showing you some because I am super, super excited about this one. If you were to ask me how many sewing machines I have, I would have to say I have no idea. And let me tell you why. You remember when COVID hit and everybody started making masks? Well, we had the shop and everybody was coming in wanting masks. You couldn't find masks at that time, so everyone was making them. We were making them from 5 o'clock in the morning till about 10 o'clock at night. And I mean that honestly. We weren't taking breaks, nothing. It was 5 o'clock in the morning till about 10 o'clock at night. And then I crashed, and then I got up the next day and I did the same thing. We had people lined up at the store waiting on masks. We had to eventually tell them just to come back. We'll have them ready. But that's how much we were sewing because you couldn't find masks and everybody needed them. So what I'm trying to say is I had one sewing machine at that time and that one sewing machine was sewing way more than it was intended to be sewing. So I sewed and I sewed and I sewed and well, I burned that machine up. You know why? I didn't take the time to oil it. That is terrible, terrible. And I cannot believe I'm telling you that. That's terrible. I knew better. I knew better, but I was running, running, running. Didn't think about it. I ended up burning it up. And then where was I left? In a pickle because I had no sewing machine and a ton of people wanting masks and expecting them. So I sent all the family out different directions looking for sewing machines. Well, at that time, everyone else, remember, was making them too. So you couldn't find a sewing machine. So we were in trouble. And I vowed at that point, we found one. But I vowed at that time to never, never have one sewing machine. Now that's me. I sew all the time. If you don't sew all the time, one sewing machine is plenty. But I sew all the time, so I vowed to never have just one sewing machine. Well, I went a little overboard because I have no idea how many I have now. But they're all good. They're all different. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Let's take a look at this beauty. This is a new home sewing machine. It is a very, very old sewing machine, but I want to show it to you. I don't usually open this up. I don't try to mess with it too much, but look how beautiful this thing is. It works, but I don't mess with it. It's still got an old thread on top, not too terribly old, but it's an old one. Let me show you the bottom of it. So there's the machine itself. Look how pretty. I can imagine this made a lot of clothes back in the day. This one has still stuff in the drawers, some new things like this right here, but some old things. Let's see, an old measuring tape, 
threads. I haven't added anything to this and I don't take anything out just because I want to kind of preserve it how I was given this one. Let's see what we pull out of here. There's some old threads and some fasteners. And the New Home Sewing Machine Company. You can tell I don't mess with this. Look at all this. because that's a new, semi-new set. But I try not to mess with it because it is so old and I don't want to bother it. So I pretty much keep this one closed up. But that is it. When, when I was at the house earlier and I showed you the, the new home machine in the cabinet, that machine was a new home. But later down the line, Janome bought them out. So new homes are no more, but Janome's are. So there's a little more history on that one that I forgot to include while I was still at the house showing you those machines. We'll start with the newest of the newest. So this is my new machine. I've not had a machine that does it all before, but this one does it all. I love this machine. I just got this one and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I never knew what it was like to have everything on a sewing machine, but I now do and I love it. For someone that sews all the time, this is the machine for you. For someone that doesn't sew all the time, you don't necessarily need this, but I do and I am loving it. This one does everything. Let's turn it on. This one has automatic everything. It will cut my thread with a foot pedal or with the machine itself. It does the pivot feature. It, well, if it has a feature on any sewing machine, this one has it. I love it. But let's talk about some other ones. When I got this machine, I realized what it means to have the perfect stitch. Now, all my machines, I've got a ton of different machines and they're all good, but this one stitches so pretty. So I'm really, really, really loving this machine. But I also love some of the old machines too. So let's talk about some other ones. Here is another beauty. This one was my mother's mother's. So my grandmother's sewing machine. I never got to meet my grandmother. She died when my mom was young, but she sewed a lot and this was her sewing machine. I treasure this sewing machine. This is a singer. They were so beautiful back in the day. They still are now, but the different kind of beautiful. And this goes down in the cabinet and this closes down over it. And I've got all the stuff that was originally in it when I was given it. It's got some old patterns. real careful with this stuff because I want to keep it forever. Some old needle sets and some elastic paper. Let's see. Like the sew machine guide. Ton of different stuff. Oh, I remember back in the day the iron-on patches. Some parts. A zipper. 
Let's see what's in the other ones. This is like Christmas. An old pattern, 75 cents. Let's see. Needle set. Some threads. Is some kind of parts. This says button worker. So I'm taking it. This is some kind of button maker thing. I don't know. If you know, please let me know. That is my mother's machine. And I don't know if you know this or not, but you can go and find out when these machines were manufactured. So Singer has a model number on it. And this is my model number. If I can get it to zoom in good. So I can take that model number to the website and look it up. You go to the website, ismacs.net, and, and look for your serial number. It'll give a range of serial numbers, and you can tell when it was manufactured. So mine, this one right here, was made January 18th of 1927. So I will treasure this machine and keep it in the best condition I can keep it in and enjoy looking at it. I did a little research on sewing machines and how and where and when they got started. And the first person to make the sewing machine is Elias Howe in 1845. And he was charging really high prices. In 1850, Isaac Merritt Singer made a sewing machine and it was the first straight stitch sewing machine. He was in Boston at the time, and he charged $40 for the first machine. They called it the standard, quote-unquote standard. In 1853, he moved his business to New York, and it was called the Singer Manufacturing Company. Just two short years later, he was awarded the first prize for a sewing machine at the World Fair in Paris. The next year, in 1856, he started allowing people to make installment payments on machines because that way more people could buy the machines and use the machines and enjoy the machines. And then that was 1856 and 1863. By that time, there was 22 different machines being made. Four short years later in 1867, Singer was the first overseas company in the world. They went abroad. In 1889, the first electric machine was made. So you see progression through this. In 95, by that time, 1895, over 14 million Singer machines had been manufactured. That is incredibly fast to me. But over 14 million uh, machines were sold and manufactured worldwide. By the year 1913, over 3 million machines were sold in a year. Move on down the line to 1927, and Singer started offering sewing courses. Between the years of 1935 and 1945, they halted production of Singer machines because they were moving their focus to the World War II and helping with that cause. We make a big jump to 1990, and Singer teamed up with Nintendo to make the first fully computerized machine. So you see how big of a transition it was to get started to where they are now. So you see a lot has changed in the manufacturing of machines, what all they can do, and it's, it's just incredible to me. So that is a little bit of what I learned about the Singer machines, and I hope you enjoy it as well. 
here are some of my machines. I've got one in the back that I use every day here. And so I'm keeping it back there. But these are some of my other machines. This one right here, I got to tell you the story behind. This one I got for Christmas in 1984 from my parents. And the history of this is, when I was in school and we had to take home ec, you had plastics, woodworking, sewing, and then you learned like cooking. So there was four semesters of school and each semester you had a different thing. Well, in the sewing section of that year, I hated it, hated it. They told us that we could pick the pattern, anything we made, it had to be something you could wear. That was the only stipulation, it had to be something to wear. Well, my mother decided that she needed to pick the pattern. Mistake number one. Mistake number two is she picked corduroy. You don't learn to sew on corduroy. And mistake number three was she picked green. And at the time, green was not near my favorite color. So I'm sewing on a fabric that I don't like, a color that I don't like, and a pattern that I don't like. Now, do you really think I'm gonna like sewing? Probably not. And I did not. So to get me through that class, she asked our neighbor, who was a seamstress by trade, if she would just just finish her project. Make it look like she did it. Don't make it look perfect. I just need her to pass this class. That's how bad that sewing class went for me. Fast forward two years and I decided I wanted a sewing machine for Christmas. And that year for Christmas, our parents gave us that particular year when everybody was that grade, my brother and sister and me. My sister was the oldest and she got a stereo that Christmas. And then my brother came along and for that same year of schooling, that Christmas, he was to get a stereo and he got a stereo. Well, when my sister got hers, she gave me her old one. So I didn't need a stereo. It didn't have to be a new one, I didn't care. I wanted a sewing machine. So I asked mom and dad if I could get a sewing machine instead of a stereo. And they laughed at me for a long time, a long time. I cannot stress how long they laughed at me because they thought, you're not going to like sewing. You didn't like the class. We barely got through that class. No, I'm not getting you a sewing machine. And I begged and I begged and I begged. And finally, mom said, all right, all right, I'll get you that sewing machine, but you're going to use it. And I'll never forget her saying, but you're going to use it. Well, here we are. That was in 1984. And here we are with this sewing machine that still works. I still use it. It's a good machine. They don't make them like this anymore. This is so heavy and hard, hard material, good put together. So this is the machine I got that year. So I guess I showed them that I was gonna use it and I do like sewing. So that's the story behind this one. The other ones don't have such a colorful story, but they're good machines in themselves. So let me put this one to the side and pull another one up. These are ever sewns. Now, any sewing machine you find, any embroidery machine, any sewing machine, any quilting machine, anything, we can get them here in the store. So if you have a certain machine that you're wanting, let us know. We'll find it for you. We'll get it for you. And this one, we keep these here in, the, in stock in the store at all times. So there's three different kinds of sewing machines that Everstone Sewn makes. They're the ones we have in the shop. Really good, reliable heavy duty machines, good machines. But like everything else, sewing machines have different levels. So if you're going to sew a lot, then you're gonna want a better machine. If you're not gonna sew a lot, you're not gonna need as good a machine. But these all are good machines. There is not a problem with any one of these machines. What you'll determine when you get your own machine is, one, how much you're gonna use it, what you're gonna use it for, and just your particular likes. Like there's certain things that I want in my sewing machine. I want an automatic threader. I want a um, cutter built into the machine. There's lots of different things. So research what you want, watch videos, see what the machines are, decide what machine you want because everybody has different things that they're looking for in a machine. But all of these machines are good. There's not really a bad machine I know of. Well, there is, but I'm not going to name it, but it's not here. <laughs> then this one is the Baby Lock Joy. 
This is the one that I have used a whole lot here at the shop until I got my new machine. So now I have this one basically sitting back there just in case something goes wrong with the machine or if somebody else needs one, all of these machines are in good shape. So when we have an event or anything and somebody needs to borrow a machine, all of these machines are available to use except this one. I'm holding this one back because this one's a special one. But all the rest of them are good. This one is too, but they're all good. But these are ready to be used and enjoyed by whoever needs them. But this is the Baby, baby Lock Joy. Then there's the Janome TS200Q. That's another good one. Then we've got, let me see. This one is one of my favorites too. This is the Singer Quantum Stylus 9960. I have used this one for a while now and it has gotten plenty of use out of it and it still will get plenty more use out of it. This has to be categorized as one of my favorites. It is a good machine, sturdy machine, stitches really well, and well, it's one of my favorites. So you see there's a lot of variety in machines. You can go from a hundred to thousands to spend on a sewing machine, but it depends on what you're doing with it, how you're gonna use it, how often you're gonna use it, as to what machine you really need. You don't need to buy top of the line if you're not gonna use it every day and if you're not uh, gonna need all the bells and whistles that are on it. So keep that in mind when you're searching for a machine now I want to show you one more machine. Just one more. Ready? This is probably, no, it is one of my favorites. I probably have several favorites, but this is one of them and you'll know why in a minute. This machine is a Singer Featherweight. I love this machine. These are machines that a lot of quilters travel with to quilt guilds and sewing bees and all with friends because they're so lightweight and they're very, very good sewing machines. They sew like no other. Wonderful machines. And Singer, we've already gone through the history of the Singer. These machines were first produced in 1933 at the Chicago World's Fair at the height of the Depression. They stopped producing them in 1964, and these machines are still highly valued and sought after by quilters and home sewers because of their ability to easily carry them with you and the fact that they sew a perfect stitch every time. So that is pretty much the gist of my machines, and I have the one back there another baby lock that I use most of the time here. But other than that, that is my machines. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven machines here. And what did I have at home? Three, four, I don't know. But I went from one machine to all of these. This machine I had when all the other machines broke, but this one was down for a, for a short amount of time. We got it back working and and had it serviced and it's good again. But so this one didn't count when I said I was out of machines at one time, because this one was out of service. But with it back in service, well, when it wasn't in service, I just had the one and then I kind of went crazy and got a bunch of machines. So there you go. Never go down to one machine, especially if you sew like I sew. But that is pretty much my machines in a nutshell. One more thing I forgot to tell you about is we dated the other machines. We didn't date this one, so let's date this one. This is the Singer Featherweight. You'll find your serial model, uh, bleh, your serial number at the bottom on that plate right there. And then you'll look up Singer Featherweights and you'll look up your number and find the date. And this particular machine was made June 18th of 1948 and there was 30,000 made. So 
a little more history of this machine. I like knowing that, just makes it neat to me. But these are such pretty machines, just gorgeous. That is all I have for this episode of The Quilting Corner. If you have something that you wanna see in the next segment, next, next week, then let me know and I will try my best to get it into it. And if you have something that you wanna share, by all means, send us pictures, send us information, who made it, when, where, how, um, anything you have about it, we would appreciate that because we like seeing things and hearing things like that as much as all of our subscribers do too. We're getting lots of comments about, I enjoyed this or I enjoyed that. And nine out of 10 things are subscriber spotlight. So we really want to hear what you have, see what you have. So let us hear from you. And until next time, happy quilting.